We absolutely need to update our rules, number one. So I, I don't think that's under dispute. And we should be looking at best practices in other countries. So, you know, I don't want to suggest that we go, OK, our, every other country in the, in the world is doing this wrong and we can't learn from them and we can't harmonize our regulations. But a lot of the best practices we see come out of Asia, Japan, South Korea, Malaysia, Singapore have all created programs that allow for easier data sharing. For instance, Japan lets most people's patients' health data be used for research unless you specifically opt out. If you're saying, you know what, I'm not comfortable with this, take me off the list, they absolutely will. But otherwise, your health data can be used to develop new pharmaceutical products and what have you. Now, they have trusted organizations that handle the data. It removes personal detail so researchers can study it safely. So this system makes it easier for companies to run big studies, develop new medicines, new products without compromising privacy. Singapore, for example, it has kind of a national data registry that all the data is, is put there in kind of an anonymized form and health innovators can access that as, you know, they have to go through some steps to, you know, ensure compliance and safety and so on. But what that does is it creates a level playing field that, you know, this data isn't just getting access by the largest companies, but instead small health tech innovators can access it as well. So that just makes the whole system more innovative. And it creates competition where it's not just the big companies can hoard all the data. Anyone can use it again under, <laughs> under certain conditions in order to, you know, develop, you know, the next great smartwatch or, or something like that.